Hello, Rockers and Mercuryans. Rock Mercury here. Welcome to the Rock Mercury Podcast. We have some breakfast. This is Christmas Eve breakfast. Made by my mama. She's over here eating too. We have some pancakes, breakfast potatoes, and some for loving and bacon. The most luxurious, expensive bacon in the world. Um, honestly, <laughs> more expensive than pig bacon, big pig bacon, thankfully. Um, and then we have some tofu eggs. My sister made from yesterday, so they still are holding up well. They look like real eggs. Y'all, y'all really wouldn't even know these are not real eggs. This thing is so hot while I'm holding it. Um, all right, let's get this ketchup going because you know breakfast potatoes need ketchup. They need it. It has some green juice on the side. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. By the way, y'all, y'all aren't going to see me do any more Pop Buddies videos. Um, Pop Buddy, or well, Mulch, she said never, said never. <laughs> But if I have any sense to me, I will not be eating it again because every time my stomach just feels so messed up the next day or the same night. So I just need to really remember this feeling I feel right now. Give um, Jersey Mike's a try. We're gonna give Jersey Mike's a try still because y'all said that it's good. So we gotta we gotta try Jersey Mike's. Um, we'll do that when my mom gets back in town so she can see my live reaction to it. But let's have some potatoes and have some breakfast. Um, you yeah. know, potatoes are good. Good job. I'm not a fan of potatoes, you guys, but these taste good. They have like onions, bell peppers, and garlic. garlic. That's my slap favorite. Mama. Don't slap your mama. Which I suggest you guys don't do. I suggest that too. Mm hmm. Go right to jail. Pancakes. Great. Or the grave, depending on which mother. Mm. Pancakes are good. The bacon is popping. I know y'all y'all remember when I used to eat the bacon. My sister would make it because my sister has disdain. She has disdain for the bacon. She overcooks it, makes it cardboardish. Cardboardish, yes. So my mom cooks it just right, and it's giving like a little bit, like you know, some give to it. So that's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You can taste the hickory smoke instead of chew it. That's right. At first, she burns the hickory smoke out of it. She's doing something wrong. Something very wrong. <laughs> she's like, oh, probably upstairs watching this. Hopefully she's sleeping. Y'all. Christmas is here. Or coming. And the world feels so much different this year. We're still going to have a Merry Christmas. There seems like a lot of going on. I feel like every year things are going on, but then we just get older. Um, I don't know. Do you, you've seen a lot of things. Isn't this seem different than usual this year? Every year does, though. With the chaoticness of it? Every year does. Okay. You just kind of get over things. Really start seeing things for what they are. People for who they are. And then when you lose people, too, we've lost the people. That's the hard part. When you lose a lot of people, it's like... Takes away from you. Yeah, and things don't... Um, but you do have to find a way to embrace the grace that is still here. Mm-hmm. Embrace the joy you still have. Mm -hmm. The blessing of the people. The blessing of the people you still have. Super important. So many people don't get to have a Christmas because they're not here anymore. And we just need to be thankful. And it's crazy because you worry your whole life for um, about people around you and stuff. And then when you when you're gone or something like, people have to keep on moving. And it's just like you realize how much stress you can have and like you miss out on all your life. Um, worrying about things you can't control. You should be enjoying it. So I feel like, I don't know, I've been in a space where I'm enjoying life more. I feel like my mom is too, she's doing more things that she likes to do than she used to. My sister's getting there. 
We did? Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, dear. Let me look a little bit closer. Nope. I'm sitting on the bench today. <laughs> Craving anything for things for Christmas as far as like food wise. I feel like maybe I'll regret not asking for mac and cheese. I don't even know if I really am like. Well, if it's if it's the mac and cheese like she made last time, then the Becca's have that and I get some. Grandma? Grandma Paris. Um, she does. It. She said that's what she's gonna do. She's she's gonna do it still. We'll see. Maybe we should need something from the store. Mm, hopefully we have everything. Store closes early today. Ooh. Well, hopefully y'all let me know. I can stop by before. Yesterday, the stores, the store we went to, had like a, a sync, a synchronization issue with the payment processor. And both lines went all the way back. I was like, of all the days this could happen, Christmas weekend. But they were moving. They're still trying to get people through. And I'm like, this is not not the day for you to be having issues. Then I never had to, I never seen them have an issue. I used to work at that store. Never seen that kind of issue happen happen before where all the registers were able to process payments. Like, they were all glitching. Never seen that before in my life. Well, yeah, but even when I worked, I worked there for like three years or so, and mm -mm. payments of Oscar were able to be taken. That's the first thing to make sure it can happen. <laughs> Let's get that money. In fact, their main goal at that time was to take payments faster, process customers faster, and they finally realized, hey, maybe rushing your customer through our front line is not a good um, experience for the customer feeling rushed. Nobody wants to feel rushed. Just have more people there, have more lines open. Maybe, you don't, maybe they don't want their eggs thrown across on top of their water bottles or whatever. Maybe they don't want that. And so they made a big adjustment and I feel, I feel it's good. It feels like you're not rushed when you're going up there. It's like, they're not slow, but they're not like rushing you through. They're making sure you're good. They're talking to you, being court, being um, friendly and stuff. Something you'll never find at Walmart. Well, you know, customer service is key. Even as I'm building my company out, I start hiring people. I'm very, it's very important. The customer facing people you have. You want to catch up too? The customer facing people are everything about your company. They're the whole, they're everything. I was having a convo with my mom about that. The customer facing people are just everything. You gotta have them, you gotta have them like happy, educated, trained well. So, my goal is to have all my people, at least from the States. Like, I don't mind the Philippines. I, like, I work with the people there. Like, it's nice, but I need, I need to probably figure out a different way. But I like having people... My most, of my, most of my business is done here in America. I want to have people here who understand the, um, the American nuances. There's different nuances to business here. Um, is nuances the word? I think that is the word. It's like there's, there's different... Things that are very specific about American culture. Um, Holly, Holly Joe's in the house. Hey, Holly Joe. Good morning to you. Good morning, Rockabilly. I love it. <laughs> Magpie's in the house. Hey, hey, hey. 2.4 thousand likes already. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all the likes. You got some good breakfast, Sam. The baby went to sleep early. He, um, he woke up at like 3 in the morning. I was not up. I heard, I heard him. I thought that was a dream. It was so early. <laughs> I was knocked out. Bro, 
it's crazy. My sister, she would not be able to wake up before she had a baby. She wouldn't wake up for a long time. She was a very late sleeper. And now, any sound of the baby, she's up. It's the power of a mother, you know? Mother is really, they like evolve and they like their, something evolves for some people. But I never thought I would ever see her wake up as early as she does. Like growing up, I would have never thought that. But it, it flipped. In fact, I remember us telling her that before she, when she was pregnant. We were like, mm -hmm. girl, you have to wake up early for this baby. The only way you don't get up is if you have a baby. Because mm -hmm. of that thing that switches inside of you. Were you a late sleeper too before we had yep. us, Mom? Yeah, if I had you, I haven't slept since. Dang. I mean, I really, really slept sleep. in. Yeah. Wrong. You hear everything, you hear the cough, sneeze, anything. That's deep. I can sleep through anything. Well, I do hear stuff. I mean, I can wake up. When I wake up, I'm up. I can go back to sleep too, though. If I need to. Like, like my mom, like she, if she wakes up, she can't go back to sleep. But like, if I get up, I can get up and be active right away. Like be a present mind. I do whatever I need to do. But then, if I'm done with that, they can say I have to get up and get a package or something, or even drive somewhere. Get up, drive somewhere, and I come home. And I go right back to sleep. Like that. So that's a good thing. I'm happy for that because I don't. I, I, if I have sleeping issues, I'll, I will be a different person. I don't know how to handle it. Sleep is so important. Only when I was really stressed, I had a hard time sleeping when I had a big movie shoot or a TV show just to do. Then I was like thinking, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna oversleep. I put all the alarms on. I'm never late to any of my like projects. So you be, being late in Hollywood is not something you do. There's too much money on the line. They do not look well upon that at all. Um. The one time I was late, I was literally coughing up, like, blood and stuff. It was bad. And I, and I was trying to just, like, get a little later in time, and I got chewed out for that. I was still trying to get there, even when I was sick. <laughs> you know, like, you knew you were going to be sick. I'm like, how did I know I was going to be sick? <laughs> mm -hmm. Crazy Hollywood. Very military like. Okay, you you want to go somewhere? Or? Mm -mm. I don't want to do work in here. Oh, I just I, I just turned. I make it. potato salad and stuff. It's turned. Noisy. Oh, you can go. It's fine. Right oh, it's fine if it's noisy. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Going to the gym after this. Do a little spa moment. Condition my hair. Wash my hair. Get all showered up. And then come back here. I still have more work to do. I'm not cooking anything. I think I do want the mac and cheese. That'll be good. I don't know what else I want. I'm already over. Like, like y'all saw me, I had like probably 12 different Thanksgiving plates. Because I kept eating leftovers over and over again. Until every drop was gone. And then like a few weeks later, we warmed up the last bit of mac and cheese that we had. And then I ate that again. It was like a, it wasn't even cooked yet. It was like frozen. So she had made it. She made the recipe. It was better than the other one that came. It was better than the, it was the mac and cheese that she made was better than the one that was for Thanksgiving because she put more like milk in there or something. It was so, like, be, like vegan milk. It was ridiculously good. Like, 
a V bite. Like I wanted to cry. After the last bite, I'm like, oh my goodness. I don't know if I ever get mac and cheese like this again. But you know, every, every recipe is different. Every time you make something, it comes out a little different than before. But everybody just mac and cheese was like crazy. Even my sister tried it too. She was like, oh my goodness. Like this is on point. So if she can do that again, I'd be so happy. I don't know, I'm just still like not wanting the same type. I don't know what I would want for things for Christmas dinner. Like that's different. I feel like Christmas dinner and Thanksgiving dinner are just so similar. So Hardy Joe, Hardy Joe said that she's making lasagna. That sounds fun. A lasagna Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. That's the vibe. But we go through the same meals like every week. We do like our Italian pastas. We do like an Asian dish, a dish. That's like um Asian kind of vibes. Um, then we do like tacos. It's always like the same, like similar palettes. Basically that Americans, like American foods, you know? Magpie says, is Holly Italian? Mm-mm. Well, is, is, oh, wait, Holly, are you Italian? Holly Joe, I don't think you're Italian. Maybe you are. I know my brother-in-law's Italian. He's nearly 100% Italian. Um, Magpie said, I made a charcuterie board. And some other appetizers. Mmm. Glamorous. Fabulous. Oh, is so this for a party? Is this for like your, like, is this what you're bringing to the party? Or is this the whole meal? It's traditional to do lasagna for Christmas Eve, I think. Okay. Maybe that's what she was, um, she was making up for Christmas Eve, Eve possibly. That sounds good. Like, I'm, I'm all here for lasagna. A nice vegan lasagna with cashew cheese. Ooh, honey, yes, work. You better slay. Um, Magpie is going to a family party. Okay. Y'all, I, like I feel like I need to go marry the toilet because that dog on pot belly is this place right here. This place right here has me run into the bathroom. Every, th every time I eat it, I don't know why I keep eating it. I don't know why. Y'all see me eat pot bellies so many times. I have to quit. I've got to stop eating pot bellies. I have to. I must. Like, it's just, it's suffering at this point. I don't deserve the suffering. It tastes great going down, but it destroys my innards. Magpie said, not, not looking forward to it. Them drinks will be flowing. Ooh. Uh-oh. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're right, because you're... Stay strong. Stay strong. You know. You know, to stay strong and have something else to replace your drink. Like some sparkling cider, maybe, or something that's not alcoholic. Um, have something ready for you. That's the hard part. Even for me, if I was at a party and they were enjoying some Mary Jane, I can't tell you that I wouldn't. I wouldn't go and do some too. I can't. Or, and that's a bad thing, you know. I wish I could say it. I know. I would say no. I'm good. I'm not having any. But if it's there, it's it's tough. Like I get it. It's a lot of temptation, especially when you're struggling with, you know. You know, addiction and trying to like be yourself, have a sober life. I get it; it's challenging. And I would tell myself in a moment, like, "Oh, it's okay. I'm just gonna have a little bit now. I'm just gonna have a little. I'm just gonna have a little, little puff of the magic dragon." Um, but I wish I could say that. No, I'm strong enough to be like, not at all. Have any? 
Thankfully, I'm in Texas, where it's very illegal here, <laughs> and I'm not trying to go to jail, so, mm -mm. so I think that's the biggest part, is helping me stay off of the good old magic dragon. Mmm. Magpie says, I absolutely, I have zero desire to drink. I just, it's just dealing with them. Ooh, that's another part. When those drinks get to flowing, the truth comes out. People's perception of the truth. And they try to trigger you and attack you with certain things. And be like, well, I don't like that you did this. And this little shady comment here, that's what shady, like this shadiness. People get so shady when they get a few drinks. They think they just want to cause drama. They think that life becomes the real housewives of the Christmas party or whatever. Like, it's sad. But I ain't touching any drinks. And the party starts getting like that. I'm getting myself in the car and going home. <laughs> mm. Absolutely, I have zero desire. Also, that I'm sorry. You know, I'm not here for it. All the drama, no more. I really cut out all the family members that were drama and all the friends. Any friends that I had drama with, or just like that kind of feeling of competition and just like an insincerity, they're gone. Like out of my life. Like, I just don't have any energy for that. None. And I think it's super important to keep drama out of your life because it just distracts you from what you're building. Life's already so beautifully brief and short. So, like, why do you want somebody who's going to cause more drama and, like, tell you, oh, well, you should, like, you know, I hate the, one, the ones I hate the most. Like, I haven't heard from you in a long time. Oh, God, so you just forgot about us. You forgot this. Oh, da, da, da. It's like, what are you talking about? The phone works both ways. And if I don't answer your call, when you call, then there's a reason why. Um, either I'm busy or I don't F with you. There you go. At this point in my life, after I went through hell with relationships and realized that I was alone, I was alone and been alone. And people who, your family and people who are supposed to be there for you, they're not, not supposed to, but that you think they're gonna be there for you, they're not, they're in their own lives. I'm not even mad at them for that. It's okay. It's great. We all have our own lives. I don't expect anything from anyone. And that's freedom. When you stop expecting anything from anyone, that's real freedom. Then you can just enjoy them for what they are. You're not thinking, oh, God, they should have done this. They should have done that. They should have done this. But if I get attacked by someone, that's a different story. I can see it clearly. I don't have them in a role at all. So I can just go right for the attack. It's like, oh, so you're coming for me for this? You're attacking me out of the blue? Now I'm provoked? Mm, cut out of my life. I cut somebody out of my life this, this year, you know, and they're going to be left in this year. <laughs> somebody I've known since I was a kid. A shady person. A problematic. A serial victim. You know, causing drama. I got tired of it. And I wish I would've done it earlier. If I'm going forward, I'll be doing it earlier. <laughs> the second I feel it, it's like, nope. Mm -mm. I trust myself. If the energy ain't right, nah. I don't care if it's the same party. I don't. I don't even care if we're if we're around other people. Oh, it's gonna be embarrassing. No, I don't. I don't know what embarrassment means anymore. Embarrassment to have to be embarrassed, you have to give and give an f about what somebody thinks. I don't give an F what anybody thinks. And so I'm going to enjoy myself. Even if that person that I don't F with is there, I'm going to still enjoy myself in that moment. If they, got, if they want smoke, then get smoke. Not for me, though. Maybe they go out there and get, a, get a, a menthol pack or something. They ain't, get a, they ain't get a smoke for me. I don't care enough. That's when you're really free, when you really don't care. You're like, girl, please. 
more please they them that please <laughs> mm. not having that the real ones will last will last a distance will, will last longer you know if you're constantly having drama constantly in confrontation with certain people they're asking to be exited out of your life they're over to testing you to see how loyal you are how real you are something that you really don't give an F you really don't give an F and then see what they do with that I put so much in here. I'm hoping this like clears me out so I don't have to like be sick anymore. I should not feel this way after eating a twelve dollar sandwich. That sounds just expensive from yesterday. Like, why should I feel sick after eating a twelve dollar sandwich? I don't believe in that. So, I think that pot bellies have been toxic to my life. I'm cutting them out. <laughs> They're problematic to my bowels. So, they're gone. Just like that. So, yeah. I'm very thankful for everything this year, though. But I just feel like something sinister is about to happen. Like, it seems really sketchy in the world. Like, this recent thing in the government where a certain country came to visit us. You know, a certain country who came to ask us for more money. This the president of that country came. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about it. I say the name of the person, but... It's all very sinister. Like, are we on the, on the verge of something crazy happening to America on our own land? I hope not. But it sure does feel like it. So, just enjoy the, any kind of peace you can find right now. Because who knows what's going to happen next. People are over here trying to prepare for a doomsday and stuff. Like, I hate thinking that way. But it might be reality might be. Anyways, thanks to Pop Bellies, I need to abruptly end this live. This is all Pop Bellies' fault that this live is ending. Because I have to run to the bathroom because they have ruined my stomach with their $12 sandwich. That would taste good, but it ruined me. And every time I eat this, eat this place, I have to just hug the toilet and it's not fair. Pop bellies, you'll be held responsible for your crimes against toilets. What you've done is not right, Pop Belly. How dare you be so delicious, but yet so toxic? Mm -mm -mm. Not good. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna go to the gym afterwards. I'll come back to on tomorrow uh, tonight. At some point tonight, I'll come back on and chat with you guys a little more. I drink some of this juice after. Mm. And beware. I want you guys about Pop Bellies and, and Subway and Quiznos, all these places. They let your sandwiches go right through you. Oh my god, and Chipotle, you already know. Chipotle is a, basically a diuretic. So, alright, you guys, I had to go. I'm like, no, no, I'm talking about Pop Bellies. Okay, I gotta go. Bye, rock on, Mercury, and see you guys on the next live. Hope you have a beautiful Christmas Eve. Bye.